instinct drives spring Chinook salmon to return to the stream where they began their lives. They swim five to 800 miles upriver to reach their home high in Idaho's mountains. In one mountain meadow, a special homecoming is being prepared. Wildlife groups and local organizations are recreating the perfect stream for spawning salmon. Early morning fog clings to the Red River Meadow. Elk calve here in the spring. Deer often browse along the meadow's edge, and for the salmon who swim up the Columbia, the Snake, and the Clearwater Rivers, this meadow is home. But today, the stream is hazardous to both adult salmon and their offspring. The water in this wide, shallow stream is too warm for the fish, and the pools and ripples used by young salmon have almost disappeared. Idaho Fish and Game manages 300 acres of the meadow as a wildlife management area. And here, a bold experiment is underway. And for the last 80 years, that's what man did to create the environment we have right now, where there's not any riparian, there's not very many fish. And so in that short time period, man did a lot of, a lot of damage to this meadow system. And here we are, we're coming out, and in six weeks every summer for three years, we're trying to put it all back to the way it was 80 years ago. For the last two summers, construction crews have carved big new river bends in the meadow. They've also restored old meanders where the river used to flow. Six inches. Oh, too far. Tom Bumstead right directs the drag lines and dozers as they reshape the river. What you see out here isn't all that great. And to get to something that will benefit all of those, um, those creatures plus the, the riparian ecosystem, uh, we just can't go out here and, and play around. You know, we, we have to get serious and move a serious amount of dirt. Once the new and old river bends are ready for water, drag lines carefully maneuver cement barriers into place to divert the river. Right there. The problem that we've had every time we've tried to divert water into a, into a channel like what we did today was that the channel, the existing channel is in size. It's down. And so in order to put water into a historic channel or the channel we want to put it into, we have to bring it back up. We're building up enough head to get water to flow through there. What, we, what we'll accomplish for these two pieces, this, this big giant bend and this historic channel, is that we'll, we'll essentially lengthen the stream channel. So we're going to essentially lengthen the stream channel by about four times. We're going to decrease the gradient. So we're going to increase the pool habitat that, uh, uh, very, that is very typical of a meadows type stream. First of all, we want to stop erosion of any kind. So we're creating ground covers from rushes and sedges and those kind of plants to uh, stop any sort of erosion that we may have created with construction. Um, secondly, we're creating fish habitat. So we're creating bank overhang with willows and other plants um, uh, such as that. And then we're also creating shade for with the uh, alder and things that we've planted along here. Um, and fourthly, we're, or thirdly, we're <laughs> creating wildlife habitat. We're pr providing browse for elk and deer. And when you turn around at the end of the day and you look back, you can see you made a difference. So. But these water-loving plants face an uphill battle. Over the last 80 years, the water table has dropped three feet. This leaves many plants high and dry by midsummer. To help raise the water table, crews put in a series of small rock dams like this one that back the water up and slow it down. And that will support the willows that we Jim planted. White like and Steve Bauer inspect really well one right that was now. built last summer. And this raises the stream level about a foot from here to the next one. Yep, so right. we've raised the water level already about a foot. There's a frog. The stream banks are really nice and wet, which is a good, good for, you know, August 4th or whatever it is. Yeah. Look at this, willows <laughs> everywhere. Yes. Yeah, these are doing great. <laughs> wow. 
While Jim and Steve are praising last summer's work, Tom's diversion downstream has run into trouble. We got some major washing problems, but I really, I don't want to fill it too much faster. You know, what happened was, as the water came up and it started washing underneath it, everything started settling. And so when it settles and it goes over the top and then, you know, and then it rolls over and it uh, uh, erodes downstream and things roll into place and you, know, you just have all kinds of fun time. <laughs> the drag lines come to the rescue, dropping huge boulders behind the diversion to hold it in place. <laughs> Neighbors up and down the river have watched the restoration project. Some are skeptical. To me, it's kind of an experiment. Let's see whether it works. I, I would like to see it work, but I'm not sure yet that it's going to. Did they tell you anything about these exclosures? No, I just know about them. I mean, that's just to see how, how the grass grows in there without anything yeah. grazing on it. Yeah. Jim White is eager to show neighbors how the project is working. His goal is not just to create the perfect stream for salmon, but for local residents to have a say in it. Hopefully something will get going. They're planting 20 to 25,000 seedlings out here this, just this year. Uh -huh. just on so what we did was uh, the money that Bonneville Power is giving to the project, they give that to Idaho County Soil and Water Conservation District. One of the things that the district does that they do really well and is one of their big goals is that they look out for the little people. They look out for the adjacent landowners and the landowners downstream. They make sure that we as agencies are looking out for that. When the money is going through them, they have a big say in it. The bold experiment for the Red River Meadow seems to be working. But people will always ask if the time and money spent here was worth it. My five-year-old came down here with me last year and saw his first salmon, heard his first elk bugle, and uh, uh, it's important to me that we make these things work, that we don't walk away from a system like this and, and let our salmon go. Um, and I know that's something he'll remember forever. And uh, uh, if it's here when he's my age, then it's a success. Thank you.